Hey, what's up everybody? This is Joshua Casper, and today we're going to take a look at Neutrino, and more specifically the equalizer module and some of the really cool features it has. The first feature I want to talk about is the learn feature. That's at this button right here. As I hover it over, we'll see a dialog box that says intelligently searches for a natural place in the frequency spectrum to set your EQ nodes. So if you didn't know, these numbers down here are EQ nodes and they move like this. If we play some audio and run it through the neutron equalizer and then hit learn, it's going to show us some places that might need attention for the type of audio that's being fed through it. So if it's drums, they'll be kind of in one place. If it's bass, we'll be in another and so on. So let's just go ahead and see. Right now I've got it set on a bass track. I'm going to go ahead and play that and hit learn and see where Neutron thinks I should be paying attention to when trying to EQ this. Now that it's set those places, uh, it's best to go in and kind of give it a gain boost and reduce to see what's changing inside of the sound itself and decide whether or not you should give it any more or any less. So this node right here has been placed right around that really low end subby sound. So depending on how much you want inside of your mix, that's the node that you'd want to adjust. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a boost over here on the, uh, it's going to pull that down a little bit. This is the ultra low end that usually you don't want any of in your mix to begin with. So I'm just going to give it a gentle roll off right there. Let's go over to node three and see what's going on. So that's got some like really harsh, muddy tendencies right there, those frequencies. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a, a gentle cut. And I believe five is gonna do about the same thing. Those frequency ranges are really kind of better to get rid of. Let's just go ahead and listen though. So yeah, that's another harsh frequency range that actually the bass sounds better if we get rid of it. Now, a really cool thing you can do with all of these nodes inside of the equalizer module is you can make them dynamic. So that's what I'm actually gonna do for these, for three and five here. I'm gonna make it a dynamic EQ. And that just means when it, the, the sound is pushing the threshold, it's gonna cut the sound back for us. So we're not gonna get rid of it if it's not enough, but we are gonna get rid of it if it's too apparent in the mix. And we can adjust the threshold here. And I'm going to do the same thing for node three. So now we can go ahead and bypass the EQ to see what the results are of the changes we've made. So as you can hear, we've made a little bit of a gentle boost there on the subby end while rolling off. Well, you can't really hear that, but the speakers will thank us in the future for rolling off that ultra low end. And we've cleaned it up a little bit in terms of the mid range, the low to mid range. I'm not going to mess with any with either of these right now because I want to go into my next thing, which is masking. Before we get into masking, I'm going to go ahead and rename this EQ to bass because it's on the bass channel. And the reason why I want to do that is going to become apparent in a minute. So for masking to work, we need to have the EQ on different tracks, at least two, but you can have on as many as you want. So I'm going to go ahead and drop the EQ on the drum track. And I'm going to go ahead and rename this drums now so I can keep track of everything that's going on and close out of there and I'm going to hop back into the base and open it up and now turn on masking and when I turn on masking nothing's going to happen until I select something from the drop down menu that appears and I'm going to choose drums however if you have multiple equalizers they'll all be listed here and you can choose from any of them so now when I click drums I have two EQs on the same module here and this is the EQ for the drums and if I make a change here it's going to be updated in the EQ on the drum channel itself so that's something to keep in mind. Now I'm going to go ahead and play both of the tracks together. And as they're playing together, Neutron's equalizer is going to show me pink lines where there might be frequency masking going on. And what frequency masking is, is when there's a, like an overload of frequencies in a certain range that are going to not play nice with each other. Uh, the kick drum and the bass line 
are probably going to have some overlapping frequencies and we need to decide which we want to be more apparent, the kick drum or those frequency ranges in the bass. Now usually a bass is a very full broad spectrum so it's better to cut from the bass and boost in the kick to make the kick stand out because that's a, a very common issue you'll run into when mixing bass with kicks is the kick isn't really standing out. However, when you get a really nicely mixed track, you'll hear that kick no matter what. So let's just go ahead and run it through the masking feature here and see if we can't see where there might be some issues. So I've got some issues around 40 hertz and then I've got a bunch of issues over here in the, in the higher range. So now we can make some decisions. Right now I boosted the bass down here and that actually might be causing the issue. So if I roll back on that, you might expect the masking indicator to be a little bit rolled back. Now there was also some masking issues going on up here in the higher end and that's actually okay because I'm going to go ahead and boost my drums because I want those hi-hats to be more present than the higher end of that bass. And the way to do that is the next thing I want to talk about inside of the, the equalizer here which is totally awesome which is relative EQing but they call it inverse linking. So if I turn on the inverse link here whenever I make a change to boost a node in one of these the same node will be applied to the same frequency and will be will be moved in the opposite direction so here if I move up you'll see that the node this node jumped right over so the eighth node well actually the ninth node jumped right over to the same frequency and as I pulled up down here it went down up here and that is totally awesome that means you can actually make significant EQ changes without doing too much. So instead of like really boosting up here and leaving that line flat, I can boost it about halfway because it's rolled down right there. So let's go ahead and see what's going on now. And now let's go focus on that sub end and see what we can do to uh, really make that kick drum stand out. So to handle this, what I've done is gone ahead and jumped into the drum EQ and now I have the drums as the main function here with the bass as a secondary function. It's the same thing, but I just figured we'd check it out over here you know, in the same fashion. So what I'm gonna do is play with this EQ until I can get the kick drum to really stand out against the bass line. And I forgot to turn on in, uh, inverse linking, which is what I want to do. And then what I'm going to do, now that I've made those changes, is just kind of move them a little bit so it, the, the changes are reflected down there. I don't need to like reset and then redo it. I can just move it around a little bit and the changes will be reflected in the EQ down here on the bass line. So that's sounding a lot better. Now what we can do is run the, this bypass EQs button, which will bypass both EQs while I hold the button down. And then when I let it go, we'll hear the changes. So let's go ahead and see if we can hear what's happened and if it's improved the sound at all. And it really has. If you listen particularly to the hi-hats and the kick drum, you'll hear that both of them are sitting cleaner in the mix, which is just, it's just brilliant. But anyway, those are some of the new features inside of Neutron and just inside of the equalizer module. However, if you haven't checked out the, the track assistant feature, I highly suggest it. It's just incredible. I wanted to share that with you guys. I hope you learned something. We'll see you next time. Peace.